be, or the guys that are considered or interested particularly in one thing, how to extract the wealth and power from the energy sources, which are the batteries that are you. Because all money in society nowadays is generated a result of your potential and what you put into the system. Because Federal Reserve notes, they have no value whatsoever. They're backed entirely on the full faith and credit of the U.S. population. You know, so without, without you backing these things up, they have no value at all. So in order for you to use these, uh, this money in society, you have to get up and work every day and put something into the system. And what you reap, you'll sow. So the system cannot perpetuate itself without you. So what is the vehicle that is the courthouse? Well, the courthouse is a very fascinating thing. It's, it's a primary facility that I like to call them chop shops, meat grinders, or wood chippers. But um, these, uh, these entities or institutions or systems are the primary uh, method or modality, or one of the primary me methods or modalities, by which your sweat equity ex is extracted out of you on a consistent basis. Uh, we take it from the ground up as something petty as parking tickets. Uh, although parking tickets aren't particularly handled in court, they can be, and we'll talk about how you, how you do that later. But, you know, parking tickets or traffic tickets, and traffic tickets and parking tickets are the number one generators of indirect taxation or revenue in the state of California, period. If you look at the numbers, you will be appalled. So check this out. You have a courthouse, Masonic Lodge. Looks kind of similar, right? Courthouse, Masonic Lodge. You have a courthouse, and you have a Masonic Lodge. I'm just leading you somewhere. Okay, you have a judge, you know, the Honorable Smiley. And you have his gavel, right? What is this? A Masonic gavel. So what I'm trying to say, and I'm not going to get into a big uh, Masonic presentation here. I'm just setting you up or to inspire you all to do a little investigation as to what the system that we're operating under today is founded upon. Who were the founders? Who were the founding fathers really? Were they a great bunch of guys as, as we were told in uh, our history classes? Or was there a greater plan? Was there a grand dynamic, the great work? What were they aiming to achieve? And if you do a little investigation, you'll find out that it's about one thing, business. So Judge, uh, Jordan mentioned earlier, judge rules from the bench, okay? This is the basic derivative. Uh, bench in Latin, bank, and bank. And the judge is a banker, and he, and if you look at the whole legal system, how it works today, it's based on banking entirely. Now, river directs the flow of currency. We're talking again the world of admiralty. It's about, you know, money is often referred to as currency. And again, the court system is always after our currency. The courts are set up to regulate the flow of currency and the, uh, the entire court system as it operates today is a let's pretend game. And we'll take a look at this. The let's pretend game. Why is it that you have to file, you ever heard the term motion in court? You have to file a motion in court. Why? Because the thing doesn't exist unless you say it does. It's basically your paper soldier in the let's pretend game, you're yelling out, you're calling out to the judge, I'm filing a motion because you're not, you're not dealing in the world of substance where you're communicating with parties openly and uh, you know, stating the facts. Okay, I was injured on or about this day and this is how I was damaged and these are my witnesses. Now, based on the evidence I'm presenting, that guy should lose his testicles. You know, what do you think about that? And, and, uh, <laughs> and the other guy presents his evidence and says, well, that guy should lose his. So, and then the, the committee of the Sanhedrin or your, your judge or whatever your elected official that's uh, directed to give the rule a law or balance the, uh, the books, um, he makes the determination accordingly based on the evidence that's presented. And, but now we have, a we have a system of judges in our corrupt system that typically make up the laws that go along because they have a vested interest in the outcome of every court case. And I'm going to show you guys some things that's going to get the wheels turning for you. 
So you guys ever heard the term uh, circuit court? Circuit court, you know, circuit courts, energy, battery, money, banking, electricity, gross national product, you know, it's all about energy. What happens though when you interrupt the flow of energy or the currency flow? You break the circuit, right? Or you get charged. Okay. You get charged. <laughs> that guy's wearing a black robe like a judge, by the way. <laughs> so anyways. Okay, but when you go to court, or, or when you go to court, you're charged with counts one, two, and three. And the judge is a bank. But if you look at the, uh, the etymology, the, the concept or the term counts one, two, and three are actually accounts. Why? Because the judge sits on the bench and he's a banker. It's all about the extraction of your sweat equity and we're proceeding forward to why. Okay, what happens when you hire an attorney to represent you? Uh, Mr. Scheister here. You know, again, why do you need to get an attorney? Because the whole thing is a let's pretend, pretend game because the attorney, uh, if you look and take an analysis of it, we're dealing with attorneys, not counselors in law, not lawyers particularly. We're dealing with an attorney that's there to represent the certificate or piece of paper, the artificial person or the natural person that cannot stand and speak for himself properly or the presumption is so unless you rebut it. So he's representing the artificial legal fiction, the reflection, the thing named the debtor or the borrower because why? We're dealing in banking. You're there, most of the, the court cases are, or um, lawsuits are of and pertaining to money, are they not? Why else do you go to court? You know, all crimes are commercial. If you look at the legislation and the codes, everything boils down to a dollar value. And in fact, I have, uh, not with me today, I have a case, the, um, the president of Tyco, he, he was uh, convicted in court and he, added, he was awarded, or the sentence was like a $25 million fine or, or the, the, the end result was like $25 million fine or some, something like that. If he didn't pay it, he was going to jail for life. What do you do? He whipped out a check, cut it, paid it to the court, and all the game was over. He didn't go to spend one day in jail because it's based on bookkeeping entries, the entire thing. So if you got enough money, as, as most of you have an inherent understanding, if you got enough money, you're not going to jail because you can get lots of attorneys to represent that piece of paper to make a deal with the judge or to properly represent you, such as OJ, and get off. Okay, so when you hire an attorney, um, an attorney, um, let's take a look here. An attorney occupies uh, a dual position which implies a dual obligation, okay? Uh, his first duty is to the courts and next to his client. So his, as an officer of the court, in any circumstance,